Hi, I'm Chris from Premier Guitar. We're at the Montreal Guitar Show, and we're talking with Luthier Bill Cummins, uh, Philadelphia, uh, who's going to show us a couple of uh, models, new, one new model and one that's been around for a little while. Uh, yeah, I guess so. This, this first one here is uh, my woodland model, but uh, this is a baritone version, and I think baritone guitars are becoming popular these days. Um, so I had a customer ask me to make this guitar. Um, it's got some unique features. Um, the, uh, maybe we'll start, well the top is a piece of uh, Italian red spruce with uh, quite a bit of bear claw in it. The bear claw is this figure in the wood. Um, and while we're at the top, I guess the bridge is uh, a pink ivory as well as the fingerboard. Uh, the uh, machine buttons. And uh, there you go. <laughs> the uh, binding is walnut. Um, and the uh, marquetry on the peghead face and the uh, rosette was kind of a collaboration between myself and the customer. Uh, he, uh, is, he does a lot of marquetry and uh, asked if he could do it for this guitar. And, you know, with my name being up there, I was a little concerned. Um, so I said, well, you know, if it looks good, we'll see. So he sent them to me and they look great. So he did a wonderful job. Uh, his name is Robert Gallagher. Um, this is his guitar. He's here to pick it up. Um, oh, and we were talking about the wood, uh, the, oh, the back and sides. It, that, it's a wood I've never worked with before. It's, uh, it's an Italian poplar which, uh, with this bizarre quilt pattern to it. Um, and it's, it's a little different than the, uh, the domestic, the American uh, version of poplar in that it's, it's really stiff and light and airy. It's, it's a great tone wood. Um, he tells me that uh, a lot of the Italian uh, or, or European uh, violin makers are interested in this wood these days. So uh, it was really fun to work with it. It's, 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 it's a little hard to work with. Um, it's got hard spots of really hard and spots that are not as hard. So to, uh, to work it is difficult. But anyway, uh, it was fun. Uh, it was a fun sound, a fun guitar to do. And in this case, we have it strung up uh, with, I guess what they're calling a, a modified Nashville tuning which is uh, the middle two strings. The whole guitar is strung in, uh, down, down a fifth, it's an A, and then the middle two strings are up in octaves. So as I say, it's it's strung like a guitar. It's just by the middle two strings being up an octave, you get all these neat voicings that you wouldn't otherwise hear. So it's a lot of fun. And uh, by the way, the scale length is 29 inches, so I'm still getting used to the long stretch. Uh, this is the Vert Axe, then, a new Vert Axe, Yes, so, and the, the, the name is one day old, the guitar is two days old. Um, and uh, this uh, kind of grew out of some ideas that, uh, you know, I, ha I have uh, association with some customers who, uh, who play with the guitar in more of this position. So the idea is if you can sit it on this leg, now you can straighten your back. You know, guitar players, we always hunch over, hunch over. you know, like, like monkeys, but now we can be men and sit up. And, and also your wrist uh, is a lot straighter in this position. Uh, then it might be in this position where you typically have to stretch a little more to get some reach. Um, so vert, vertical axe, it's the vert axe. Um, and it's really this one, I, there's a number of ways to do this design. Of course, this is intended to be uh, an electric jazz guitar, uh, resistant to feedback. It's kind of a chambered mahogany body with uh, a spruce top and uh, you know, it's got some acoustic sound. Why the sound port is there really just for uh, some acoustic ambiance. Why, if you want to sit and practice with a guitar not plugged in, uh, allows you hear the uh, to hear the box a little bit, and I suspect uh, it gives it more of a, a slight more of a breathiness electrically. That's probably barely noticeable, but you know, it's it's not quite as boxy. And uh, yeah, it's got some contours. Uh, the back is radius. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it just all makes it sit a little bit better on your on your body. Um, it was a fun guitar to do for me, uh, design-wise. It was uh, stepping out of the box. You can see the arm chamfer there. 
and it really opened up a lot of ideas for me. Uh, there's a lot of places I'd like to take it. And, uh, Can you tell us a little bit about more. electronics? Huh? The electronics are really simple. You know, the electronics are a Les Paul, you know, influenced electronics. These are uh, Fralin pickups, um, really just his PAFs. I, I forget the winding I used for these. Um, and, uh, you know, the appointments are all ebony. Uh, this is ebony, maple. Um, split block design, that was kind of fun. Uh, it's like a 3D split block image. I had some other ideas for the guitar that uh, yeah, dressed it up a bit, but I, I think my tastes are really for, for understated. Um, and I got all finished. I, I finished the guitar and I looked at it and I just thought it was a little foo foo, you know what I mean? <laughs> so sometimes guitars could be that, so I pulled it back a little bit. But uh, yeah, it, it, was, it, was fun to, it was a fun guitar to do. Something I had to get out of my system. Very cool. So for yeah. people that are interested in your guitars, uh, where can they find you on the web? CumminsGuitars.com, C-O-M-I-N-S-G-U-I-T-A-R-S.com. Um, and uh, all my contact information is there. It's the best way. That sounds great. Thanks, Thanks. Bill. Thanks for... I'm Chris. You're watching PremierGuitar.com.